Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. Uh, as you can tell, we're doing things just a little bit differently again today. A few uh, month or so ago, we, we kind of changed things up, threw everybody off just a little bit, but uh, they ba you balanced out and everything was good, so we're going to do it again today. So I'm going to share a message with you at this point, and then we'll get back into our praise and worship. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and have our kindergarten, first, and second graders go ahead, and you can go to Children's Church. Miss Carrie is already in the back waiting on you. So kindergarten, first, and second grade, you may go ahead and be dismissed, and uh, we'll see you all here in just a little bit at, at the end of our service today. So uh, it's good to see so many of our kids here this morning. Today we're going to be talking about, again, uh, thankful hearts. And what I wanted to do this morning is God laid on my heart the idea of sometimes we, we lose track of, of the idea of thankfulness. And especially if we're not careful, we can even do it in the midst of our worship. That we kind of get so used to things and things become kind of old hat to us that, that we miss out on, on the idea of truly showing our thanks. So today we're going to do things just a little bit differently. Uh, we have shoe boxes here. We also have the, the table back. Amen. And the table is back because of the children and, and everyone's starting to their, their program practices. And so we have to move it back and forth. I just said, take it off. And then I, I come in here and lo and behold, there's, the, the table was back and they're trying to make me so cool. I'm telling you, they're working hard on it, but it, it's getting there. It's getting there. I will be cool one day. Amen. <laughs> oh, quit laughing. That's happening. All right. I really thought y'all would be thinking, oh, pastor, don't worry about it. You're already cool. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Thanks, Chuck. Still too late, buddy. Still too late, Chuck. There's a long story with that one. So too late, Chuck. You, you, you doesn't work anymore. No, but we're going to look at thankful hearts. If you have your Bibles, Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 17. We're going to be reading verses 11 through 19. As we look and we see what God is doing for us and how we ought to be thankful and not miss out on great opportunities of giving thanks. So let's go ahead and stand uh, this morning as we read uh, Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And the Bible says here, Now, it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of the Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face and, uh, at Jesus' feet and gave him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were, th were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we, we thank you for today. Thank you for all that you've blessed us with. And Lord, we are a blessed people. Even in the most difficult times, we are still blessed because, Father, we have your presence. As we've been looking now for the past few weeks, Lord, of, of thankful hearts, I pray, God, that every person in this room would be able to just focus on you this morning and focus on your word. And that, Father, that, that we could be able to sense your presence through, through this and sense your power. And, Father, you would create in us thankful hearts. Father, we just ask that you move in your, with your spirit today. And, Lord, I pray that the words I'm about to say will not be my words, but they'll be yours. That this message is not my message, but your message. And, Father, that the response would be as you desire for it to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. We're looking at thankful hearts. The question and the title, I guess the, the title of this message would be, Where are the nine? What we saw here is that Jesus goes into an area and there were ten lepers, ten people who had the skin disease and they were basically outcasts. They were thrown away, not being able to have any contact with people they, they were ridiculed they were mocked they were they were basically 
dejected and rejected from, from society. And they caught wind that this man named Jesus was coming into the community. And they wanted to be a part of that. And so the Bible says that they were standing away off because, again, they could not get close to people. It was against the law for them to even have any contact. And they began to cry out, Master, have mercy on us. And so we see that Jesus responded to their call with just a simple command, go and show yourself to the priest. And so as they went, and I can just imagine as they're walking and the pain that this disease caused them and the discomfort that was there, that they began to notice that as they were walking, Maybe the pain wasn't as bad as it was. The pain is lightening up. And some of the, the fatigue and different things going on, even some of the, 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 the eyes, the, they were being able to maybe see a little bit better. And something was happening. And the Bible says that as they were going, they began to look at each other and realize that healing was taking place. And they were healed of their skin disease. And we see that nine of them continued on to go to the priest, but one came back. And so Jesus asked this question, where are the nine? And sometimes if we're not careful, we can get very critical of this and we can begin to say, well, what happened to them? What in the world would cause them not to go back to Jesus? What would cause them to just continue on and begin their lives and, and move forward? But you've got to remember that Jesus had told them, go and show yourself to the priest. But I believe that what happened here to these nine, they did basically what a lot of people in our day and time are doing. What maybe we, even as Christians in the church, if we're not careful, they're doing exactly what many of us do. And so I want to look at those things very quickly this morning that I picked up from here of things that I see that sometimes I even do in my life. And the, basically the first thing is this is that what the, what the nine did was they, were obe they took, chose obedience above the love. Now, you've got to remember, Jesus had told them, go and show yourself to the priest. And so as they were going, even though they were being healed along the way, when they realized healing had come, they decided, we're going to just go on and do what we were told to do. But the one came back. He came back to Jesus. And so what they were basically doing is what we do a lot of times is we obey for obedience sake. Well, we're good Christians. We got to do what we're told. We got to do things. And so what we do a lot of times is we'll go through our lives doing a checklist. And sometimes we as Christians can love lists. Amen. Lists of do's and lists of don'ts. And we love checking them off. Well, today I got up, I read my Bible, check. I prayed check. I talked, uh, I, I was kind today, check. I went to church, check. I sang a song, check. Boy, oh boy, am I good. I did what I was supposed to do. And so often, if we're not careful, folks, we even in the church can begin to do things not because we have a joy in them, but because that's what we think that we're supposed to do. As I even shared with you last week, that with that we lose the awesomeness of God. We lose that awe of Him. We lose that joy. We lose that excitement. Because all I'm doing is doing this to check lists off. My friends, listen to me. We're not supposed to be checking off lists here. We're supposed to be loving Jesus. And sometimes we can get in the list, uh, get in the idea of working for Him more than we are worshiping Him loving him he doesn't want our stuff he doesn't want our actions you know what he wants he wants us he wants our hearts and when our hearts are there listen to me when our hearts are there we're going to do the stuff Be not because i have to but because i want to because that's what's special to me i love serving the lord and i'm not going to do it as a checklist but just say lord here i am show me what you want in my life but these guys had no emotion to Jesus. They had no attachment to Jesus. They had attachment to his work, what he told them to go do. And my friends, sometimes in the church, if we're not careful, we get into that mindset. We lose why we're doing what we're doing. For example, why are we even here this morning? I hope that it's not, well, because I'm a good Christian. And this is what we do on Sunday. 
Oh, great sacrifices to God. No. That's not what God wants us here. God wants us here because he wants us to just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And so sometimes we can get, obey just for obedience sake, not having any emotional attachment to it. We just do it. But second that I found out is that at times, folks, it's easier to work than praise. It's easier to do the stuff. Because what I found out, by doing stuff, it doesn't cost me anything emotionally. I can do a lot of stuff. I can work, and I can, I can go, and I can do, and I can do all this stuff, but there's no emotion to it. But when I praise, what I'm doing is I'm opening myself up to God. I'm opening my heart. I'm opening my mind. I'm, I'm surrendering myself to Him. And that's difficult, because when I do that, that costs me a lot of stuff. Whenever I, I talk with the praise team, and even myself and, and my staff, that we, we talk a lot about why are we doing what we're doing, that we do it because we surrender ourselves to him. The, staff, the, 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 the praise team, I'm not wanting them up here just to sing, sing a song. If that's all they're doing, they're doing it and they're checking off the list, I sang well today, check. I played the instrument well today, check. I did a fairly decent job on the sermon today, check. We got dinner ready for tonight, check. Then the next thing you know, we're forgetting why we're really doing it. That what we are doing here today is not for us. It's for Him. And we need to understand that sometimes I can get all wrapped up in working and doing and say, God, aren't you proud of me? And God says, man, I don't want your burnt offerings and your sacrifices. I just want you. Now listen to me. When He has us, then I'm still going to give my sacrifices and my burnt offerings. I'm going to do those things. I'm going to do, I'm going to preach the sermons. I'm going to teach the Bible studies. I'm going to go to the hospitals. I'm going to share with people. I'm going to do those, but it's, it's out of my praise for Him. That's what I tell the praise team. That's what I want to do. That's what I want my staff to do. When you're up here, praise Him with your singing. Don't just sing, praise Him. When you're playing the instruments, praise Him with your instrumental playing. When I'm up here today, I'm praising God through my sermon. As I've always shared with you lots of times, that, that, that what I've learned or what I try to do is this is my act of worship. This is between me and God. Y'all just happen to get to be listening to it. Because I'm worshiping with my sermon today. I'm offering it up to him, and that's why I pray, Lord, don't let these words be mine. Lord, don't let this message be mine. Let it be yours. I'm turning it to you, God. And so sometimes we take obedience, and we rate that above the love for Jesus. The Bible says that they worship me with their lips. Ah, but their hearts. Man, their hearts are so far from me. They're just empty words, empty actions. But the nine, they did what they were told to do, but they had no emotional involvement and in whatsoever. They were not attached to Jesus at all. We kind of look and we see in the scripture with Ma Martha and Mary when Jesus went to their house. Martha, the Bible says, began to work and got up and did a whole lot of stuff, man. And she was feeling all good about her stuff until she began to realize something. I'm working like a dog and no one else is doing anything. Jesus, well, you've got to talk to, to, to Mary. I'm working my fingers to the bone here for you. I'm honoring you and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Check, 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 meal done. Drink served, dishes clean, check, check, check. And look at, look at, look at, look at Mary. You remember what Jesus told us? And Mary has chosen the better part. So Martha, you're, you're all caught up in the stuff. But you're forgetting the important part is the worship. 
Folks, sometimes if we're not careful that we can even come in here out of a source of dignity and that's what we're supposed to do and yet we forget the worship and then what we do is we begin to look around and go, well, wait a minute, God, I'm the only one serving here. Everybody else is in the sanctuary. I'm the only one out here working. Jesus said, no. It's all about the heart, folks. So don't be obedient just for obedience sake. Be obedient because that's where our love is for Jesus. The second one is the gift obscured the giver. In other words, they got so excited about what they were given, they forgot about the one who gave it to them. And so what we see here is that they had an amazing gift given to them. Amen? We look and we see that, that basically everything that ever wanted was given back to them. They had lost their life. And it was now given back to them. Wow, what an amazing gift. And I can imagine that we know what that's all about. As I shared in the first service this morning, if you have kids, man, you know what I'm talking about. Christmas time is coming, amen? And the kids are getting excited. And if you got your tree up, man, people are, the kids are excited. When you begin to put gifts under there, the kids begin to think, oh, what's, what is that? I want that gift. Oh, I can't wait till Christmas morning or Christmas Eve when I finally get to open up that gift. And man, they look at it every single day. And man, you as a parent, you're going, whoo, I did good this year. Man, I got my kids stuff. They are going to just fall in love with me as a dad and as a mom again. And they're going to be so thankful. And on Sunday, on Christmas morning, when they open up their gifts, they're just going to say, Oh, praise you, Mom and Daddy. You are so good parents. Thank you for the great blessings of life that you've given us. And that's our anticipation, right? We're ready for them to just know that we are the best parents in the world because we're seeing it on their faces. And then comes Christmas morning. They run down and they, oh, start tearing open the gifts. Man, that first gift in you as a parent, you're going, oh, they're going to turn around. They're going to feel so good about us now. And they open up their gift and they rip it open and they look down and they go, oh, this is what I wanted. And you're ready. You're ready for them to tell you how good you are. Oh, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted. What's next? Give me the next one. They're blind. And you're thinking, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Where's the, uh, hey, hello? We, yeah, hello? But they're blinded by the gift. They're so excited about the gifts that we forget about the one who gave it. Folks, sometimes we in the church can do that. We can begin to look around and we begin to see all the beauty of the church. Man, God has blessed First Baptist West, amen? He has blessed us with the building. He has blessed us with, with, with talented people. He has blessed us with ministries. He's blessed us with a new section of the building. He has blessed us beyond anything. And folks, if we're not careful, we can get so wrapped up in the stuff that we forget that we don't have any of this because of us. We have this because of Jesus. And we've got to be real careful. And so we see their amazing gift, and, and life was given back to them. Man, you got to understand the excitement in these guys. They, they were being able to go back to their families. Man, I don't know how long it had been. Some of them probably years before since they've even been able to, to talk to their wife or, the, or to their kids or to go home and, and be in their house, just sleep in a warm bed, to get enough food to eat in their bellies. Man, they were given an amazing gift, and they were so excited about it. Their life was given. Man, that could go back to their homes. They could go back and now make a living. They could go, and, and they could join in activities and they could get back in the social network of life who's to blame them for being super super excited their life was given back my friends listen to me we as god's people are blessed amen life was given to us through jesus christ we have been given life we've been given life more abundantly we've been given peace and comfort and joy all of those things are laid out before us i have been blessed i've shared with you before i have been blessed beyond anything i've ever dreamt possible of being blessed and sometimes we get so excited Woo! i've been given all this and then we forget though to come in and say god thank you thank you for what you've done for coming into this place with an awe 
and an excitement about getting to be in the presence of God and getting to sing and lift up praises to Him, getting to receive His Word. But we let the gift sometimes obscure the giver, the stuff over the Savior. And then they forgot the, that the praise is as important as the prayer. We see back up in the, in the verse whenever they began to call out. And, they, and the Bible says that they called out with a loud voice because they were standing far off. And they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And that was their prayer. And they cried it out with with every ounce of energy they had left in their bodies. They weren't caring about anything else. They weren't caring about what people were saying. They were giving out that praise, uh, giving out that prayer and crying out, God, help me today. God, give, give, give us something. Show us your mercy today. But then we see that when they were healed, the one came back. And the Bible says that he prays as loudly as he prayed. The Bible says that when he came and he fell at the feet of Jesus, and when one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, listen, with a loud voice. With a loud voice. Man, he, as loudly as he prayed for it, he came back and he praised him for it. With a very loud voice, he came back. He didn't care what people were thinking. He fell at the feet of Jesus, said, Jesus, thank you, thank you for the blessings that you've given me. You have restored life back to me. And God, I want to thank you for it. And my friends, we should do some remembering here that just like he did. He didn't forget what he had lost. And he didn't forget what he had been given back. And sometimes I think if we're not careful in the church, we tend to forget. What have we been given? Man, look at, look at what, look what was lost to us. The Bible says that we have no hope apart from Jesus Christ. But when he died on the cross and, and, he, and he gave up the spirit and, and the veil was torn, we now have access to God through Jesus Christ. Look what we've been given. And so we should remember, because here's what's going to happen. I want to wrap up here real quick. If we remember whom it was that gave us what we have, if we remember what we've been given, our praise will be just like our prayer. When we began, when, back when we came to know Jesus, we cried out, God, I need you in my life. All we knew is that we needed him. But today is our praise like our prayer. And if we remember, here's something's going to happen. If we'll remember what God has done, our praise won't be optional. I will not choose not to praise him. I will choose to give him my life. I will sing out my praises to him. I will worship him. I will, I will, will surrender myself to him. I will be here. This won't be an option. There won't have to be a decision made on Saturday night or early Sunday morning. Where am I going to be today? There's not an option. I'm going to be in the house of the Lord. Why? Because he saved me. And today, I want to gather with people. Man, and I want to sing praises to him. I want to receive from his word. I want to worship the living God who gave himself for me. I want to be together with my people. And man, don't you even try to talk me out of going today. Man, I promise you, I, I, I don't know what happened, but I promise you probably when they all began to notice that things were really going good for them and the one started turning back, the others probably said, hey, where are you going? He said, man, I'm going back to Jesus. Oh, you got time later. You don't need to do it today. You'll know where he is. Come on, go with us. Because, man, we got a new life to give. We got things to do now that we've not been able to do in a long time. He said, no, listen, I got to go back to Jesus because I'm going to give him praise because I know who I have life through. This is not an option, my friend. This ought to be something we desire and long for. And whenever we remember, oh, if we could just truly remember, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to be talked into singing. I wouldn't have to be asked to stand and join in. Man, they have to turn my microphone off sometimes. Amen? Because I don't want it to be an option. I want to know. And I want God to know. Man, when there's praise going on, I'm in it. The Bible says, you remember when Jesus came in to the city and, man, everybody's trying to get everybody to shut up, said, hey, quieten down. And Jesus said, hey, man, if they quieten down, even the rocks will cry out. Listen to me, folks. I'm tired of the, of the rocks having to take my place. 
And we, if we'll remember, we'll be tired of that as well. But not only will it not be an option, but we look and we say our praise won't be done quietly. You look and see what it says, that he raised his voice loudly. He gave his praise openly. He wasn't trying to hide it. He wasn't embarrassed about what people were thinking. He wasn't worried about how people were going to listen to him and think that, well, he just didn't praise right. He didn't say the prayer. He didn't. Man, he said, I want to shout it out. I want to give it out. And folks, so many times we might like to be thinking, well, you know, Pastor said we're reverent people. We're supposed to be reverent in church. We're not supposed to sing loud. We're not supposed to get happy. We're not supposed to... Folks, sometimes I think we, we, we sometimes, if we're not careful, we'll mistake deadness for, for that idea of solemnness. Sometimes we're, we're not being reverent. Sometimes we're just plain dead because we've forgotten what's been given to us. But he cried out with a loud voice, and we sometimes, even in the praise and worship time, oh, now, preacher, I don't sing very well. Neither do I. You've heard me last week, remember? And we worry. So, in the church, it bothers me, and I do it too. But I, why do we worry about whatever people, other people are saying about us? Why do I worry if you like my singing or not? It doesn't matter. Why do I worry about, why do you worry about the people standing around you? Listen, none of this is for them anyways. These folks up here, they're not, they better not be singing for you. I don't want them singing for you. I, 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 I want them to be singing for him. And here's how good God thinks you sound. The minute you begin to sing with your heart, God says, hey, heaven, shh, listen to me. My kids are about to sing. My kids are about to sing. My kids are about to pray. My kids are about to, to preach. My kids are about to lead in worship. My kids are about to teach a class. My kids are about to, man, listen to them. And last one. Our praise will be done with humility. Our praise will be done with humility. The Bible says that when he came back, and the Bible says in verse 16, and fell down on his face at his feet, we will come before God again in awe and going, God, thank you for my life. God, thank you for blessing me. God, thank you for healing me. God, thank you for being with me. God, thank you for guiding me. God, thank you. And we'll come knowing that I didn't do any of this. I wasn't able to do any of this. You're not able to do any of this. This is all God. And if we'll remember, oh, we'll be a humble people. Oh, we'll come before him in humility, again, realizing who he is. You see, right here we see that when this guy was calling out to God, he was standing. He was standing up, calling out, Master, Jesus, have mercy on us. Oh, but when he came to thank him, he wasn't standing before him. He fell at his feet. That's what happens to us when we remember all that God has done for us. Amen? All that he's done for us. Listen, I want to close with this thought. Private worship is good and it's necessary. My friends, we, we need a private time between us and God. Amen? Every morning you wake up or every time before you go to bed, somewhere throughout the day there needs to be a time. It's just you and God reading his word and praying. But I'm telling you, there is something very special and amazing and rewarding about public worship. That's why he says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as some do. But in the last days, coming together, encouraging and drawing strength. Man, God does something in public worship that is absolutely amazing. And so we need this. Just a time for us to say, Thank you. In just a few seconds, we're about to enter back into time of praise and worship. It's your time to, to declare to him that you understand what he's done for you. That's what, that's what the, the praise and worship time is. It's just saying thank you, Lord.
through song. It's time to enter our time of, of our hearts together to say thank you, Lord. But during this time, if at any point in this time God stirs your heart, and if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want to encourage you, come on forward and, and we'll be down front. We're, we're not going to be standing here. We'll be worshiping. But man, you, you come to us. We'll, we'll pray for you. We'll pray with you. If God stirs your heart to be a part of this church or following baptism, man, we want, we want to be a part of that with you. But this is our praise and worship time. And we're going to sing praises to the Lord. Mm. Jesus looked at the one and said, where are the nine? In this crowd of a couple hundred people, I don't want Jesus to have to ask, where's the 199 now? They heard the message. They felt my call. Where are they? I want to be the one. And I hope you want to be the one. That returns back to Jesus to say thank you. So if God's speaking to your heart, we'll be down front. Would you come forward? Or just sell things right there. But man, if you've got it and God's spoken to your heart and you want to praise him, join in with us, okay? Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. And as the praise team comes back up, Lord, gets ready to lead us in worship, I pray for them, God, that they will not be here just to sing songs. Lord, they're going to come back up here in just a moment and they're going to give you their heart. Lord, they're going to sing with all their heart. They're not going to do it just a checklist of the songs. God, they're going to praise you. They're not going to play instruments for, for anyone. They're going to play it for you. And God, we as a congregation, we're going to join in, and we're going to return back to you, and we're going to say thank you, Lord, through these songs that we're going to sing to you as we enter into a time of praise and worship. Stir our hearts, God. Remind us who we are, God. Remind us what you've done for us, God. And I thank you for that. But Father, if there's someone here today that Lord, they may not know you. Then I pray, Father, during this next few moments, they would come, and Lord, they would receive you into their lives. And Father, I just pray that there's someone here today that's burdened by the things of this world and maybe worship is not easy, that God, you would just stir their heart this morning. Strengthen them and encourage them. And God, receive your praise now from thankful people. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.